and you folks are all set. All right. Uh, I'm going to assume that people can see my screen. Is that true? Yeah, I'd give it another minute. There's still people trickling in. Okay. I think it's a minute to connect. I'm, I'm going to keep myself muted unless I'm answering a question or something because I, I live on a busy street for those of you who are, who are here. This one. Yeah, I found the Zoom controls. Hello, everyone who's coming in. We're going to get started in just a moment. All right, I think we're... I think we're good, so we'll get started. Hello and welcome everyone who's interested in IMDb. Um, my name is Jillian Smith. I'm the director of the Interactive Media and Game Development Program here at WPI. Uh, I'm joined today by one of our faculty, uh, Professor Gonzalez, and one of our students, Michael Medicoli. Do you want to say hi very quickly? Um, yeah, I, so I teach a lot of the visual arts courses here, uh, things like concept art um, and visual development for a bunch of other stuff, but games as well. Um, and yeah, it's a pleasure to be here with you all today. Uh, Michael, do you want to say hi? Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Michael. I am a fifth year BSMS student. Uh, so I did my undergrad in computer science and, and GD. So if you have any questions on the double major, the BSMS program, I'm happy to answer that. I'm happy to answer questions about like student experience, student life in general, and clubs. Um, yeah, I'll have an eye on the Q&A. So feel free to drop questions if you come up with them over the course of the presentation, and we'll have time for questions at the end. Too. Great. And so yeah, what we're going to do is I'm going to give a quick I'm not that quick, but I'm going to give an overview of the IMGD program, who we are, uh, what I love about IMGD, the kind of work that students do in our program, um, and then we'll just we'll open it up for questions from all of you. Um, so I'm going to kick it off with a video that I'm hoping will run. There we go. We can't see it. We are not seeing the video. I think we're just seeing the part. It might be because you're sharing the the program of PowerPoint instead of a screen. That's frustrating. Well, we can watch the cool vid visuals that come through. <laughs> if you if the uh, video is on the PowerPoint, you might be able to just do it in full screen. It doesn't work, unfortunately. Well, we'll skip over the video. And anyway, we've got other examples of student work uh, very soon. So as I said, I'm Jillian Smith. Um, what we're going to do is show some demos of student work with, with pictures, uh, talk about our curriculum, the faculty, the kind of philosophy that we have in the IMDb program in general, uh, talk about the all important employment outlook, what kind of jobs do our students go into after their time here at WPI, uh, and, and give some profiles of why, what some of our current alumni are doing. Um, so let's start by talking about student projects. Um, I'm sure you've heard if you've been a, at any of the other WPI information sessions, um, the WPI is a project-based institution um, and IMGD is by no means an exception, right? Um, students are working on projects from the moment they arrive here in, in the IMGD program. Um, and there's a, a lot of really exciting opportunities that students have to be able to um, both develop their own project ideas, work on funded projects, um, and present their project work uh, at, at local uh, and, and national and international venues. Um, so I'm going to start by giving kind of an overview of one of the student-run studios uh, here in IMDb from the last few years. Um, we had a, a student developed, sort of independently developed uh, studio uh, called Penumbra Sorry. Games. Sorry to interrupt you, Jillian, but I think that the slideshow is frozen. Oh, let me try stop share and reshare. This is the weird thing about Zoom, huh? Um, yeah, it might be presenting a different screen because we, we could see all of the slides on the side. Let me try it this way. Um, I'm sorry, folks. I'm on a different computer than I normally am. I swear I know how to do my job. Let's do it this way. 
and then in sim share. Someone let me know if this is working now. Yep. There we go. go. You got it. Both. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Um, all right. So um, this is a collection of a, a current undergraduate students, now um, most of them are seniors, uh, in IMDb. Uh, Penumbra Games formed uh, when these students were, were underclassmen here. Um, and they've been, uh, they spent their first couple of years here at WPI working on um, a, a series of team projects. Um, and so what they wanted me to share with you all um, is how they really view the work that they've done uh, as teams uh, on their project work as being really central to the WPI plan. Um, you know, projects exist in our interactive qualifying project of the junior year, the major qualifying project in the senior year, um, but also in a bunch of other places, right? So many of their course assignments are team-based. Um, and, and that's something that we really value here at WPI um, not only because like it's good to work in teams and learn how to do that to be a better human, um, but also because we're finding um, that in many of the roles that our students want to go into in interactive media and games, it's really critical for them to be able to learn some of these teamwork skills um, because no, no amazing interactive media or game project um, or very, very few can be made by one person alone, right? It's always on an interdisciplinary team with artists and designers and programmers and audio people. Um, and so a huge focus of the IMDD program here at WPI uh, is on, uh, on specialization within a particular area, but also um, developing the capacity to be able to work on, on interdisciplinary teams. Um, there's a lot of support for, t for project work outside of the curriculum as well. Um, Michael will be able to speak to this a little later. Um, through, through many of our student groups, we run a series of game jams every year. Um, that are, are really sort of rapid, uh, rapid project prototyping and development uh, experiences that are also fun and social, um, uh, where students are, are working on game jam games. Um, there's a lot of support that we offer to our students in terms of access to resources. So all of the software and hardware that you use in your classes, you're able to use an extracurricular um, experiences as well. Um, one of our major teaching labs, right? Um, the the IGDA will often use it to, to run their events. Um, and then we have a really strong focus among the faculty um, in bringing in faculty who have both academic and industry experience. We have three professors of the practice who come from a long history uh, of work in interactive media and games industries. Um, we have connection to uh, MassDigi, which is the Massachusetts um, sort of incubator and, and networking collaborative uh, for supporting entrepreneurship and industry uh, relations uh, in interactive media and games um, who are really available to help with things like pitches and portfolio development and finding internships. Um, one of the examples that they so, uh, they gave how are you gonna uh, do was this? Cutthroat Game Jam. You're gonna um, this do this. Your first phase is your collection <coughs> phase. Excuse me. We're so very loud. Two phases where you the get video to go here. into our yeah, unique the world from... with multiple food items, from apples to roadkill to beetles. You want to find. <laughs> Uh, so Cutthroat Game Jam is a game jam that, um, that one of the student groups runs every year uh, of developing a game that has a bunch of um, uh, like weird constraints on, on what you're able to make, um, sort of inspired by the TV show Cutthroat Kitchen. Um, and then uh, the studio worked on a game called Chromadas that is Again, a, you know, a, a game that was developed relatively early in the curriculum here in IMDb um, by this, this group of students um, working on all things from, from art assets, creating sort of color palettes and, and concept art, character art, uh, level design. Um, and they showed, uh, they showed the final version of Chroma Dash 
uh, at the Boston Festival of Independent Games in 2019. We are, as I'm sure you've heard, we're only about an hour away from Boston. Uh, and so all of the sort of Boston area events that run uh, are a, a quick and easy train ride away from IMDb um, to be able to, to go to a bunch of these showcase events. Um, so that's what, uh, that's some of the, the work that the students in, in Penumbra Games wanted me to share with you. Um, talking more generally about IMGD, um, IMGD at WPI is one of the world's oldest degree programs in interactive media and game development. We've been around since 2006. Uh, I like to think that means that we've learned how to do our jobs pretty well. We had Zoom artifacts notwithstanding. Um, and we've had 1,300 graduates since 2006. Um, and so we have a strong professional network of, of alumni, um, many of whom will come back and, and speak at various events that we have, um, connect with, with students socially. Um, so we're, a, we're like kind of a, a big program um, in terms of like the, the length of time that we've been here and the kind of support structure that we can offer. Um, I have 27 faculty in the IMDD program, um, many of whom are core and, and are teaching classes and, and students. Uh, you know, if you come here, you'll see these, these faculty members teaching you sort of year in and year out. Um, others of whom are more affiliate faculty who work with students on projects, um, teach some of our elective courses uh, that, that students have the ability to take. But we're a, we're a, a, a big uh, and, and diverse and exciting program um, and, a, and an exciting place to be. Um, I joined WPI uh, as a faculty member five years ago. And, and one of the main reasons that I wanted to come to WPI is that we're really one of the only programs in the country focused on interactive media and games where we do it all. Um, so that you'll find that there are, um, as I'm sure you're looking at a bunch of different schools and a bunch of different programs, there are some that are very design oriented, some that are very visual art oriented, some that are very technically oriented. Um, at IMDD, we're, we're all of them oriented. Um, we have courses uh, and faculty expertise in technical development, in 2D and 3D and technical art, uh, in, in design and design processes. Uh, in writing, right? We have a, a writing concentration and writing faculty in music and audio uh, and in game studies where we, we study um, and, and learn about the history of games and how games are played and, and what their role is in society and how that informs their design. Um, and, and the fact that we sort of do it all, right, is really predominantly what, what informs the philosophy that we have within IMGD um, of helping create a, a set of graduating students who are able to work fluidly across these different disciplines while being focused in one specific area. So all IMDD students have hands-on team-oriented project-based experience in every single aspect of interactive media. Uh, if you're coming in as a tech student, you'll have to take an audio class. If you're coming in as a design student or an art student, you'll take some programming classes. Um, the goal is that everyone gets a broad base uh, of knowledge, right? And then everyone has the ability um, to specialize from there in, in a direction that works for their own, um, own goals and dreams. Um, and so with that in mind, with, there are two different IMDD majors that have a lot of overlap between them, but I wanna clarify up front. Um, we have an IMDD technology degree, which is a Bachelor of Science degree, and an IMDD degree that's a Bachelor of Arts degree. Uh, so I want to start by talking a little about what happens in the IMGD technology degree, then I'll talk about what happens in the IMGD Bachelor of Arts degree, uh, and, and then we'll talk about employment, and then there'll be lots of type of questions. Um, so the IMGD technology degree is really heavily focused on interactive media and game development, right? Programming, typing, coding, things. Um, this is actually my background uh, is more on the technology side. Excuse me. Um, and so just to give you an example of some of the things that students do in this space, um, one of the courses that students take in typically their junior year, um, <coughs> excuse me, is IMDb 3000. Um, this is a course where students build a game engine from the ground up. Um, it's a, an ASCII text-based game engine, so it doesn't have like a, a rendering layer with 3D graphics. Um, and really the focus of this course is giving students a space to be able to investigate all of the different technological components that go into developing a, a game. Um, and there's some really, I love seeing the work that comes out of this class because there's some really creative approaches and, and I've been really impressed by the, the breadth of games that people can make um, in this engine. 
uh, in part because it's is this text based system. Um, so this is a screenshot from a game that was made last year. Um, this is a, an a asteroids game um, that you play uh, in Dragonfly in, in this engine that the students build in the class. It comes complete with like explosion particle effects over here and little ships that are moving around. Um, it's 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 really wonderful. Um, in the technical uh, uh, game development sort of side of the of the degree, um, you'll be doing things like learning about how game engines work and game engine architecture, um, artificial intelligence for games. We have dedicated courses in that. Uh, AI navigation systems, right? Uh, networking. Uh, Professor Claypool, one of our technical faculty, has a lot of exp expertise and experience in game networking. He actually does funded projects with some of our students uh, in collaboration with Google Stadia, looking at latency effects in online games. Um, so there's a lot of cool work there. Uh, work on game physics and cameras, right? Just a ton of stuff all coming together from all of the different uh, parts of what need what you need to know technically to be able to work on, on, on developing and programming games. Um, I like to remind people, right, that we are the interactive media and game development program. And so while a lot of our courses are about game technologies and building games, um, a lot of people use them in, in really novel and, and interesting and unique ways um, with more of an interactive media focus that can be sort of arts based, like weird creative games, um, or it can be like totally non game things where like computer graphics and live coding music. So, um, you know, ask me questions about making games for sewing machines, uh, about live coding coding performance. This is a screenshot from one of our faculty, uh, Professor Roberts, um, does amazing work with like code as an instrument that you then perform with to an audience. Um, it's pretty amazing. And then a really common question we get is, you know, what's the, what are the things you can do with IMDD, right? Um, some people want to be IMDD majors and have it as their primary major. Um, we also have minors in IMDD. Um, and a really powerful combination that we see a lot of our students on the IMDD tech side do um, is a double major with computer science. And so there's a, lot of there's a lot of overlap between the two degrees between computer science and interactive media. Uh, and games on the technology side. Um, and many of our students choose to do a double major in CS and IMDB um, to kind of get best of both worlds, right? Like deep technical expertise and also deep design, uh, design knowledge, right? From IMDB. And the combination of those things is really, really powerful and can unlock a lot of doors um, for students. Um, on the IMDB art side, this is where we see more of our visual art, technical art, writing, audio, and design work. Um, and so uh, we have a, a really robust curriculum in the arts. Um, the Professor Gonzalez will be able to answer questions about later. Um, just to give you a quick overview with some of the uh, both faculty and student work that we see. We have classes in figure drawing and digital painting, uh, 3D modeling, um, uh, sort of traditional poly modeling, as well as digital sculpting. Um, Professor Sutter is an absolutely amazing um, digital sculptor. Uh, he's done uh, done work with a bunch of sort of major entertainment studios, um, and I love seeing the work that comes out of this class. Uh, technical art for rigging and optimization, uh, and motion capture as well. Um, on the animation side, a really a, a strong principle that I think many of our art faculty hold is to, to work off of fundamentals, right? And so we'll do um, 2D drawn animation and storyboarding and ideation. Um, you know, the, the 12 animation principles from Disney, right? Like that are universal, whether you're doing tech or non-tech uh, informed art practice. Um, and then we see how that carries into 3D animation um and 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 beyond right and so just some more student work samples um so there's some work from janelle right and like concept art character art um we have a project that one of our faculty finally sherry is running called the rigs of color project where the the goal is to develop a, a sort of a broad base of of highly diverse uh character models uh from from different ethnicities focused on really trying to get to like, how do you model like different hair types? Um, some really, really wonderful work. Um, this is some work from some of our first year students who've taken just one art course. Um, and, and from the very beginning, right? Like the goal is to, to 
to build creative and, and artistic skills with a focus on building something that's that's functional and really able to be used in a in a game or interactive media or film or medical or whatever project right from from day one um, again some more student art um, it, it's it's really lovely to, to see the work that comes out of those art courses every year and I'm I'm constantly amazed and I kind of want to like be able to take some of those classes myself as as someone with more technical training than arts training. Um, on the writing side, uh, we have a writing concentration within our degree. Um, we have a new professor of the practice, Ben Schneider, who's coming from work in the industry uh, on, on a bunch of big title games. Um, that he's, We're very excited to have him. He just started this term, um, bringing some of his insight from narrative design and writing. Um, we have a music concentration for game audio. Uh, this is Professor Barton. He makes robots that play that are musical instruments or that play instruments. And so you can do work in like making weird instruments with robots if you want. Um, just a, a lot, a lot there, right? There's a lot going on all the time. And what and I love about IMGD is that we have a really vibrant community around that. Um, this is a flow chart that in no way do you need to memorize, um, but it's more here to illustrate sort of the intersection between what happens in the Bachelor of Science degree and the Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, so we have some common set of courses that students in both majors will take. Um, IMDD core courses around the game development process, storytelling and critical studies, as well as essentials of art and graphic design. Everyone takes social issues um, or philosophy and ethics courses. Everyone takes a data analysis course. Everyone takes audio and some core set of, of 2D and 3D animation um, and 3D environment modeling courses, as well as a core digital game design course. Um, and from there, the, the pathways start to diverge a little bit, but there's a lot of flexibility within these pathways as well. Um, so advanced courses on the IMDD technology side, um, you know, you'll take some computer science courses that then prepare you to be able to take things like technical game development, artificial intelligence, novel interfaces, immersive human computer interaction. Um, on the visual art and tech art side, there's more advanced 3D modeling and artistic game development courses and interactive electronic arts, motion capture, things like that. Um, there's the design writing uh, sort of set of concentrations that have a bunch of advanced courses at the junior and senior level in serious games and advanced storytelling. We have a new course starting in DTERM on procedural, um, procedural narrative, so like AI meets uh, narrative design. Uh, for nonlinear narratives, so there's, there's a lot there. Um, and then outside of that core curriculum of like all of the IMGD designated courses, um, we also have opportunities available to work uh, and take courses at the Worcester Center for Crafts and Ceramics and Glass. Um, we have a, a lecture series and a celebrity speaker series and master classes that we recruit to that we sort of offer on an ad hoc basis, often based on, on student declared interest and demand. Um, we have some people coming into from industry to teach like a little mini masterclass on community management, for example, this year. Um, we have a minor available that's six courses so easy to add on to, to anything else that you're doing um, at WPI. Uh, we have a Master of Science program uh, that Michael is in. He's in the five year BSMS option. Um, so he did his undergraduate degree with us and is sticking around the extra year to get his, his Master of Science degree. Um, we have other graduate degrees as well. We have a Master of Fine Arts and a PhD program. If you wanna be in it with us for the long haul, right? You're very welcome. Um, and then we have a really strong local uh, developer community, both within, within Worcester, um, but also in the Boston metro area as well. Um, we always have a booth at PAX East every year. Um, last year was COVID and so it didn't happen, but we're, we're starting it up again now that hopefully um, uh, we're gonna be able to meet people in person again, right? Um, and then just an enormous shout out to, to Mass Digi. Um, excuse me. Whoops, where did it go? Come back. I'll talk about Mass Digi in a little bit. Actually, um, we're, we're very pleased to have them with us this year, but I have a, I have a whole slide from them in just a moment. Um, outside of the curriculum, we also have a whole series of student clubs. Uh, we have a chapter of the, um, the International Game Developers Association that runs a lot of events, uh, professional networking opportunities, 
um, provides resources to students. Michael and I are meeting next week to talk about some ways that we can try to, um, to build more resources and infrastructure to support um, student created uh, work outside of the classroom. Um, we have a, a game develop, uh, a game playing club, right? Like people who just want to get together and play games. That's great. Have fun. Uh, we have an esports sort of competitive gaming scene on campus. Uh, we have a diversity in games student group that's really focused on um, on fostering inclusive culture and and having conversations and and work toward um, sort of issues at the intersection of diversity and equity and inclusion and games. Um, we have a lot of resources available on campus, both within our, our main buildings, um, as well as access to, to resources across campus. So we have virtual reality and augmented reality development equipment. Uh, we have a green screen room in the, in the basement of this building, actually immediately below where I'm sitting right now. Uh, we have 3D scanning and 3D printing um, facilities, uh, both within IMGD specifically, and then all of the, the larger um, resources that are available to everyone on campus, right, through the Makerspace and the Innovation Studio um, and through uh, uh, Practice Point, which has like major uh, uh, fabrication facilities that we're, we're working out a, an ability to be able to use those as well. Um, we have an audio recording room. Uh, we have Wacom tablets in all of our teaching labs. We have an enormous screen in the Innovation Studio that, that we run things on sometimes. We, we did a live coding performance there. Um, and a lot more, right? We, we connect to the global lab. Um, we have a, a paid studio uh, over in the innovation studio as well. Um, just a lot of uh, labs and resources available. And, and our goal really is to be driven by student demand. So I, I have students in my office on a regular basis who'll come in and say, we wanna be able to do this thing. And, and the answer is always, okay, let's see if we can figure out how to make it work, right? And, and, and we get there. Um, we also have a number of international opportunities, which I realize are weird to talk about during a global pandemic, but uh, the goal is that by the time many of you uh, seniors will be able to travel freely around the globe again. <laughs> um, so we have a, a project center that runs in Japan uh, for the MQP. This is a phenomenally popular project center um, where students work in Kyoto and Osaka uh, at universities there working on their, on their major qualifying projects in Japan. Uh, I advised it one year, it was phenomenal. I strongly recommend it. Um, we have opportunities to collaborate with students in Sweden at the University of Hufta. Um, as well as collaborative opportunities at the undergraduate level in Australia and New Zealand. And that's the MQP, right? WPI as a whole, I'm sure you've heard in various other information sessions, has a lot of, of focus on global experiences at the IQP level. Um, and, and many of the IMDD faculty do advise IQP project centers. Um, uh, and we also have a IQP project center in Japan uh, that Professor De Winter runs. Uh, and a humanities and arts project center in Japan. So there are many, many opportunities to go to Japan when you're, <laughs> when you're at, at WPI and, and in IMGD. Um, talked about University of Hufta. Okay, let's talk about money uh, and numbers and, and are people gonna get jobs? Um, so in terms of the entertainment game industry specifically, um, there, there is good money to be made if you, if you can move to the right places to be able to work in studios, although there's, there's a, a growing independent uh, games movement that means that studios are popping up kind of all over the place. Um, remember these numbers because it matters on the next couple slides. Typically engineers and programmers uh, as entry level into the games and entertainment industries will be looking at making about $72,000 a year. That's the average entry level salary, so zero to three years of experience. Uh, artists, animators, and designers. These are the 2021 numbers that I literally just pulled it off of uh, the game industry career guide earlier today. Uh, both are uh, running around $55,000 as a, an, an entry level annual salary. Um, this varies very heavily by skill set um, and by location, right? So, so the games and entertainment industry tends to be very centered in particular geographic regions. Um, but there's a lot of places to, to be able to go to apply the kinds of skill sets that you get in IMDb outside of sort of the core AAA game industry um, that, that is, is much more distributed um, worldwide. 
Um, we, we put a lot of effort into providing professional and professionalization support to our students at WPI and within IMDD. So our students work with the Career Development Center. Um, we're a top ranked school at WPI in terms of career services, career placement and internship availability. Um, we have an amazing retention rate. Um, and then within IMGD, we do a lot of work to try to help students um, build their professional networks and build their professional um, portfolios and opportunities through our work with, uh, with Mass Digi, as well as running annual events to be able to showcase student work, connect our students to alumni, things like that. Um, Mass Digi, if you've read a little bit about IMDD at WPI, you may have run across the news article that Mass Digi just recently moved to WPI. Um, they used to be at Becca, Becca closed, a bunch of those uh, Becca people moved over to Clark, uh, Mass Digi moved over to us, um, and we're so, so thrilled to welcome them here. They're set up in the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center uh, over in the Innovation Studio. So if you've had the ability to do a campus tour, you've probably seen like somewhere near where their offices are. Um, and Mass Digi do an amazing amount of work, working directly with students as well as with faculty in the IMDD program on connecting what we do in IMDD to the larger industry and academic uh, and government sectors um, who are interested in games. And, and the result, right, is that we learn about job opportunities. We know kind of what's, what's happening now in the professional space and interactive media and games and what's coming soon. Um, and we have a, a, a really strong way to be able to connect our students uh, and our program and the work that we do here with the outside world, right? And so Master G, um, Tim and Monty at Master G have been absolutely amazing to work with. We're just at the beginning of a really exciting long-term collaboration with them. Um, and they've already done so much to be able to, um, to grow what I think we were already doing pretty well, right? But to, to grow that even further uh, into providing um, uh, professionalization opportunities for students. Um, in terms of alumni employment, just looking at some of the more recent numbers, we track, we're track tracking somewhere around 80% of our alumni. Some alumni sort of fall off the grid for a little bit in terms of not giving data back to the CDC. Um, that's normal at any university, but uh, of sort of the 80% that we're tracking, we're seeing students place into um, a wide variety of careers uh, immediately following their time here in IMDb. Uh, many are going into the entertainment entertainment industry, working at places like Epic, Twitch, Tencent, Pocket Gems, Kyan Interactive. These are all places that we've sent uh, our students um, just in the last two years. Many go into sort of broader technology and engineering fields, often with a focus in serious games or simulation. So many of the skills that you learn on the IMDD tech side have broad applicability outside of the core games industry. They're going places like Raytheon, Dell, MIT Lincoln Lab, MITRE. Um, we have some number of students who go out into interactive media and web development roles more broadly, uh, places like Bose, um, games and media education, um, sort of not the, not the counselors teaching ID tech, but like people who are designing the curriculum uh, and working really closely uh, with, with students in local schools around games and media education. And we have some number of our students who go on to graduate school as well, either at WPI like Michael, <laughs> I think he's the WPI person here, um, as, as well as other graduate schools as well, like Stanford, Claremont uh, Graduate School and University of Tokyo. And what we're looking at in IMDb is that the average salary that we're seeing our students go into is around $80,000 a year, um, which again, higher than the average sort of nationwide, right? So um, we're, we're, we're feeling pretty good about where, where we place our students at, at the end of their time with us. Um, oops, other way. Go this way. I'm wrapping up, I promise, and then we'll have question time. Uh, just some specific examples of, of our current students and where they are. Um, so we have an, a number of students who immediately moved on to Harmonix. Harmonix is a, a studio that is well known for making games like Rock Band. Um, and so uh, that's a, a Boston area studio. Uh, Robert is a, a boss key. Um, people who go out to Bose. Uh, MIT Lincoln Lab to work in serious games, um, Blizzard Entertainment, um, uh, Michael is at Bethesda, was at Bethesda Softworks. Um, and so there's a lot of places that, that our students go who are alumni who we can sort of check in with every so often as well. Um, and then many students who, who develop their own studios, um, maybe the most famous of which is Alchemy Labs, Alex Schwartz. Um, 
the CEO of Alchemy Labs um, got got bought out as a major uh, uh, VR thing, made enormous amounts of money. Um, and then for those of you who may be interested in going out into the game industry following graduation, which I realize is not all of you, but maybe a substantial number of you, these are just a few of the titles that alumni from our program have worked on um, in, in the last decade, right? We've been around since 2006 um, and, and we have a strong alumni network as a result. Um, so with that, I'll say thank you for, for coming and listening to the, the rapid fire spiel of what IMGD is. Um, I very much miss being able to do these kinds of events in person where I can like take questions in the middle. Um, but we've got plenty of time now to be able to, to take some questions from all of you um, for, for either me or Adrian or Michael. So thank you. If you have questions, you can put them in the Q&A, um, and I think we can see them there. Tell us what you want to know. Or you're just that good, and you gave them all the information they needed right up. I imagine you know everything now and <laughs> have nothing you need to learn from me or Adrian or Michael. Maybe while we're waiting for questions, Michael, do you want to talk a little about sort of the student experience in IMGD? Yeah, sure. Um, so I know Jillian mentioned that uh, uh, we have a handful of, of clubs on campus. Oh, uh, there, there's actually a question in the chat, so I'll jump on that one first. So how long does it take to get a dual major of CS and IMGD? Um, you can do it in the same four years. Um, so you can do you can do one major, you can do two majors, you can do a combination of majors and minors. Um, I personally did a, a dub, double major in CS and IMGD and then minors in robotics and art. I wouldn't recommend stacking that many things together um, after having gone through it, but um, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of overlap so that you can kind of like mix and match and do whatever you want. Uh, I see another question in the chat of what are the requirements to get into the IMDD tech program? We have no requirements to get into the IMDD tech program. We will take you as you are. Um, I hear sometimes from students who are worried, you know, if they didn't have a programming background in high school, are they going to be able to, to succeed, right? Yes, absolutely. We will take you with zero programming experience. We will take you with zero anything experience. It's our job to help you, right, and, and, and guide you through this. So there are no prerequisites and no requirements to get into the IMDD tech program whatsoever. Um, please, please, please join us. I didn't have a background in programming before I went to my undergrad. I remembered what it was like. You are welcome here. Um, yeah. Michael, can, do you want to answer Michelle's question about the dual major with CS and how it works? Sure. Um, sorry for the background noise. Um, so yeah, I can I can also say too, in terms of requirements, like I, I had friends coming in. I personally came from a high school that had a solid CS program. I had friends coming in that had like never touched programming in any capacity before. And the, the intro CS curriculum and, and the intro MGD curriculum are very good at like leveling the playing field, um, helping you to, to kind of hit the ground running from, from wherever you're coming from. Um, with regard to uh, the double major, so basically uh, if you were to do one degree or the other, right, there's a set of requirements that you have to meet, um, like a set of classes that you can take. Basically, uh, the double major allows you to take the overlap from those two and apply it to both degrees. Um, so for example, for the IMGD tech degree, you have to take a number of computer science classes. And then for, for the computer science degree, there's like specific classes that, that you'd want to take. So, or, or that you'd need to take to meet the requirements. So basically um, there's, there's a, a tracking sheet that I can, I can drop the link to in the chat in a moment um, that kind of goes through what the uh, specific requirements are, um, but the short version is uh, you take a, a few more, a, you, you take a few few more courses or a few more CS courses than you would from the IMGD tech degree, and that basically covers your CS requirements. There's really a lot of overlap between the requirements. Um, so yeah, totally, totally doable in, in four years. Let me find... Yeah, I, I constantly see students who are doing the four year double major option and it's very achievable. Um, 
we occasionally get students who do the Bachelor of Arts degree with a double major in, in CS. That's a little trickier, but it's still doable in four years. Like I've known students who've done it in four. Um, yeah, well, while I'm finding that link, uh, feel free to keep dropping questions in the Q&A, but I can talk a little bit more about um, the clubs on campus. Um, so Jillian mentioned like game jams, uh, the IGDA chapter here is awesome. They also do weekly meetings with tons of workshops. We have guest speakers come in. Um, I think my, my favorite part of IMGD specifically at WPI, which is something I like to talk about in, in these sessions is the community. Um, so we have like a good program in terms of like resources and, and a lot of faculty and, and a good number of students, but um, you still kind of get like that that small community vibe, right? Where you'll you'll get to know a lot of your peers and you'll work with a lot of people on different projects. Um, so the uh, um, like it's a very it's a very tight knit community, um, and uh, at a lot of these like extracurricular events, you'll get to meet a lot of people that have similar interests. Um, the video game club does uh, Saturday night gaming. I think they've uh, moved online again temporarily recently, but uh, in a normal on a normal weekend, like they kind of book a large space in the campus center and just like set up a bunch of game consoles and there's a bunch of people hanging out playing games. Um, yeah. Um, I'll say I know in terms of community, um, uh, well, what was I gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say that, that oftentimes through that community, you tend to find the people you're gonna work with on other projects. So um, of, the, of the MQPs that I'm advising this year, I think almost all of them are sort of student teams who are also friends who got together and wanted to make something together. Um, and, and that's been pretty consistently true for all of the MQPs I've, I've advised here at WPI. So um, I, I agree with Michael from what I see as a faculty member, um, uh, we have an incredibly strong community um, I'm, I'm really proud to be a part of. Yeah, and piggybacking off of all of that, I'd like to note that it's also really easy to interact with uh, a faculty as well, because we've got things like, um, well, it's not running right now, but the gaming with grads, but you don't necessarily need to be a graduate student to go to gaming with grads. And it's it's run by one of our, our um, faculty members, uh, Dean O'Donnell. And you come and you play games with, with alumni, um, grad students and undergrad and i'm usually there too so um sometimes we get other walk-in faculty and it's just it's it's board game night really that that we do and it's really fun to develop a community that way so it's it also goes between um you know graduate students and undergrad uh, again we've seen uh, it's it's become a little bit segmented just because of of covid um but you know i'm sure that we'll get back to seeing each other a lot more as soon as as soon as things get a little bit more normal i would say even during covid right and michael was a, a big part of this you know when the pandemic hit and we realized that we were going to need to run, run remote for for a period of time we're now back in person right <laughs> yeah. like we teach yeah. we teach all of our courses in person um and and we're doing a lot of of in-person events um just some of them are mm -hmm. still sort of for convenience still remote um but uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I remember there was a, a big conversation between student leadership and faculty of uh, trying to figure out how are we going to maintain community across uh, across this time that we're all going to be apart. Um, the students have their own Discord server that they that they run. I was going to say a way for prospective students to join that Discord, right? Yes, I am pulling up the link right now to perfect. Uh, Great. So you are welcome to join that discord server as a prospective student. It won't give you access to the full server, but it'll give you access to our current students who can answer questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, and faculty are, are also in that server, but it's a student run thing, right? So faculty can't see all of the conversation that's in there either. Um, and on that discord, we were running regular community events. Um, mm -hmm. We ran virtual graduation in Minecraft. Um, and and be and in large part because you know, we we really felt the the risk of the loss of community during our COVID year, um, and and wanted to find ways to be able to to maintain it. And so uh, I've loved having the Discord server as a, as a place just to be able to chat with my students right outside of a classroom context. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in in uh, in IMDb, you are very very welcome to join um, that server and, and ask more of your questions there. 
Um, I've just dropped the link in the chat along with uh, my uh, Discord username and my email. So feel free to reach out with any questions because I, I know that we're short on time. Uh, I know Julian and, uh, and and Adrian can drop their, their emails as well, probably if you have any questions. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let me put um, the IRB <coughs> contact email in here. This comes to both me and uh, our admin who can help direct questions if it's something that I'm not going to be able to answer immediately. Right, right. So uh, speaking to workload, I believe on average, um, what is it it's supposed to be like, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Jillian, but I believe it's supposed to be nine hours a week per class that you're supposed to be working. But depending on what the class is, it's like those hours may vary. I can tell you that um, the CS courses usually have a, a, a heavier workload than than most other courses at the entire school. The, the, CA, the CS majors put a lot of hours in. So if you're going to be double majoring or minoring like that, I know that that's something that you you should really seriously consider before you before you do that. Um, I just because I know I'm getting messages from 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 Evan of like we need to wrap up, um, but but workload is an is an ongoing conversation. So yes, absolutely. What what you're typically looking at is the same as anything at WPI, right? Three courses per term, seven week terms. Um, you know, work hard, play hard. Um, but but I will say we're also having a lot of conversations with an IMGD of how do we make that work. Um, you know, making sure that that's really rewarding work to be doing, uh, valuable work to be doing um, for, for your professional goals um, and, and sort of having and, and fostering a really healthy work-life balance for, for our students. Um, yeah, I think we're supposed to be wrapping up, um, but please, if you have any questions at all, the Discord server, email imdd at WPI. Uh, I'm happy to chat with people over Zoom. Normally we would like in a, in a non-virtual setting, I'd like hang out in the hallway for a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, please, please do reach out to us with any questions that you have. And I have also dropped my email in the chat just in case you folks have any admission specific question, but I want <laughs> three of you so much for coming today and giving us all this incredible information. I know I learned a lot that I'm mm -hmm. on the road, so I really appreciate you folks. Um, and as always folks, check out the uh, virtual events that we have going on in the Office of Admissions, but also the in-person events and maybe the chance to meet with uh, professors if they're around when you come visit. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us folks and we hope you have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.